Hey there Dev Squad, today we're going to be showing you how you can sculpt landscapes inside of Unreal Engine. Hey my name is Luke and today's episode is all about breaking down Unreal Engine 4 sculpting tools. By the end of this video, you're going to be comfortable creating your very own landscapes using Unreal Engine 4's landscape editor. This is all in preparation for the next video where we actually paint our landscapes. So let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay, so now that we're inside of the engine, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can begin to sculpt our very own landscapes using Unreal. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a brand new level. You can do this by going up to File, New Level, and then from here, we are just going to create a default level. We're not going to worry about saving this test map for now, and once we're in here, we are going to create our landscape. Now, to edit your landscape and to create brand new landscapes, you need to be within your landscape editing mode. You can access this from the top, or alternatively by holding down Shift and then two, and this is going to put you into your landscape mode. Now, if you don't have a landscape in your scene at the moment, just like I don't, you are going to have the ability to create your own landscape. Now, what I'm gonna do is very quickly go through some of these settings so you can better understand the process of creating a landscape and some of the different settings associated with that so you can get a landscape that's going to fit your need. And then we're also going to be moving on and showing you how you can use all of the landscape sculpting tools. So let's go ahead and create this brand new landscape. Now the first couple of options here are pretty straightforward. You've got create new or you've got import from file. Importing from file is something we're going to be covering in its own video. But for now, if we go down, the next important setting is our material. Our material is going to be something that we're going to create inside of Unreal Engine and this is going to handle all of the things like the color, the shininess, the, the offset and all of that good stuff. Again, we're going to be touching up on the material in the very next video, but for now, we are going to be leaving this blank. We can always edit the material after we've created the landscape, so be sure you do keep that in mind. Moving down from there, we have got some pretty straightforward settings, our location, our rotation, and our scale. So what we can do if we wanted to, we can move the location of this landscape to move it up and down or left and right throughout our scene if we need to. We can also rotate this and we can also scale this. And just like any other setting for transformation, we can also edit this after we've actually created this object. So for now, we're going to be leaving this all set to default. Moving on from there, this is where things get interesting. So our landscape is going to be made of both sections and components. So our section size is going to be this little square here, and it's made up of all of these smaller squares, and you can see these in the darker green color. And with this, you can see right now, it's currently made up of 63 by 63 quads. And these quads are essentially your polygons. The more of these you have, the, the more detailed it's going to be, or the more control you're going to have rather. And you can use this in conjunction with your resolution to really fine tune the quality of this. Now what you can also do is increase the size by changing the number of sections per component, a component is your big bright green lines here. If I set this to two by two sections, you are going to see we have got our component, which is the big green lines, the bright ones, and then we've got these slightly dimmer green lines just inside this, this is a section. So you've got one by one, which we had before, and now it's two by two. If we set this to one by one, we are not going to be able to see any other sections within our component there. The next setting that we've got is directly linked into our scale. This is going to allow us to change the number of components. So therefore, the more components we have, the bigger our landscape is going to be. So if we go ahead and turn this up, you are going to see our landscape is going to get bigger or smaller as we adjust this. And we can also change it on the Y axis as well. So we've got our X and our Y, or alternatively, you just wanna do a number by a number and that is it. Moving on from there, the next setting that you've got is your resolution. And again, this is going to make it bigger, 
but we can also adjust this along with some of the other settings to directly affect the quality of our landscape. Now, using these settings, you can really manipulate this landscape and there is going to be certain settings where you might want to adjust this to be smaller or lower and so on. For example, with a low poly game, you wouldn't want to have really smooth edges. You'd want to turn things like the number of quads down and the overall resolution. Or if it was a smaller level, you might just want to turn down the number of components just to make it nice and small. So hopefully Hopefully this gives you a better idea of how you can manipulate these settings to craft the landscape that you want. But for now, let's go ahead and just press create to create this landscape so that we can begin to look at some of the different sculpting tools that we have got available to us. Now this video is going to be just on the sculpting side of things. In the next video we're going to be taking a look at painting our landscape and we can go between these two different modes here using the tabs at the top left of our viewport. So for now, we're just going to be sticking to our sculpting mode. So with that being said, what we've now got in our viewport is our landscape. Now, one thing you might want to do is adjust your camera speed to make flying throughout your scene a little bit easier. If you're finding it's too slow, simply just go over to the camera icon in the top right hand corner and turn that camera speed up. So with that being done, let's go over a quick walkthrough of all of the different tools that we've got available to us. So the very first tool is pretty straightforward. You're just sculpting height data. And what this is going to allow you to do is just increase or decrease the impact from the height map. So if we hold down left click, it is going to sculpt up. If we hold down left click and shift, it is going to sculpt down. So just using these two controls here, you are going to start to see how we can actually manipulate this terrain. And we can use this sculpt tool to create things like mountains. And we've also got a whole bunch of other tools available to us to make these more realistic and really define the shape. Now with this sculpt tool that we've got here, one thing that we want to do is have complete control over the brush. The brush is essentially what's allowing you to do all of this painting. And you can see it as you hover over an area within your viewport. Now, some of the common settings for this are going to be things like the brush size, and you can access these settings on the left hand side in this sculpt panel, or over at the top in our tool panel here. So if we turn down our brush size, you are going to see our brush is going to get smaller or bigger. We've then also got our brush fall off, which is essentially just going to change the smoothness because the tool is blending between two points. You have got a inner ring and you've got the outer ring. So if you have very little ground to smooth between, it is gonna get harsher. So if you make this fall off nice and big, you're gonna have some nice smooth shapes just like this. If we turn that down, then it's gonna be very rough shapes just like that. So have a little play around with your brush size and your brush fall off to see the different effects that you can achieve. Now, the last brush setting that I want you to take a look at is your tool strength. This is pretty straightforward. It's just essentially how much effect this is going to have. If I turn this all the way down to zero, it is not going to do anything. If I turn this to say 0.1, it is going to be a very slow sculpt. And this can actually give you precision. So it's definitely worth adjusting your tool strength to get the results that you need. So with that being said, we now know how to adjust our brush and we also know some basic sculpting. Let's take a look at some of the different tools that we've got. The next tool is our smoothing tool. And this is going to smooth the height maps or the blend layers. So in the form of sculpting like we're doing now, if we go ahead and press smooth, and then we run our brush over these surfaces here, we can just smoothen this out, getting rid of any imperfections or noise in the height map. So as I go through this rough shape here, hold down left click to smooth, you are going to see it is going to do just that. What you've also got next up on your tool list is your flatten tool. And this is essentially going to just flatten our landscape. So it is going to take the first location that we left click at. And then if we click and drag and hold, 
anything that goes within our brush while we're holding that down is then going to become completely flat. And again, you can use your settings like your tool strength to adjust just how well it does that along with our fall off as well to make this smoother if you need to, just like that. So that is our flatten tool, it's really straightforward. Let's take a look at another interesting tool, that being the ramp tool. And this is going to allow you to create ramps within your landscapes. So if you go ahead and press left click, you are going to have your first point of the ramp. And then if you hit left click again, you are going to have your second point in your ramp. And with this, we can adjust these points just like any other object. So we can select these and then we can move them around using the normal transformation in the top right. And that is pretty much all you need to know about moving your points. What you can also do for this ramp before you create it is you can adjust the ramp width and the ramp fall off. So with the ramp width, pretty straightforward, turn your ramp width up, your ramp gets wider. Your fall off on the other hand is going to affect the smoothing. So it's just essentially going to be smoothing by default from this inner line to the outer line. The more space you have, the smoother it's going to be. The smaller the space, the harsher it's going to be. You can go ahead and press add ramp. And just like that, it is going to make us a ramp automatically from point A to point B, just like that. And with these points, you can also move them afterwards and then add a second ramp or as many as you like, just like that. So now we know how to do this. We can either just leave that ramp there or we can press control alt we can or we can just press control Z to get rid of that. But for now, we're going to move on to the next tool, which is our erosion tool. And this is essentially going to simulate erosion caused by the movement of soil. So with this, we are just going to be holding down the left click. And this is going to be eroding our landscape just like that. And you can see it's got a very unique pattern to it. And this is the pattern that you would expect from soil going from one area to another. And we've also got another erosion tool over to the right of this called hydro erosion, which is going to give you a more water based effect, which is a lot more smoother. But nonetheless, it is still eroding away our surface. So let's say you're making a river. This is where you're going to want to erode using the hydro tool. Whereas if it was a mountain, you would maybe use the standard erosion tool. And with this erosion tool, both hydro and our standard, we've also got a bunch of settings associated with this, such as your threshold, your noise, your iterations, and so on. And rather than me sitting here explaining what each of those settings are going to do, the best thing to learn this is to simply dive in there, play around with some of those settings, and just get creating with your landscape. So having said that, Let's move on to the next tool, which is our noise tool. And our noise tool is essentially just going to add noise to our height map. So having said that, what this is going to do is it is going to give you some really jaggedy effects on your landscape. If we hold down left click and then paint onto here, it is essentially just going to be giving you variance in your height map going from high to low. And we can change some of the settings such as a noise scale to give us more rough edges on here or more variants rather. And we've also got our noise mode such as our add and our subtract. If we only wanted to add up with our noise, then you just do add and then it's not going to go into the ground. Or if you just set it to sub, it's only going to take away while adding that noise. So again, have a little play around with this to really get the feel of some of these landscaping tools that we have got available to us. The next tool that you've got available to you is the retopologize tool. And this is definitely something that you should be getting yourself into the habit of using. This is essentially going to automatically adjust landscape vertices with an X or Y offset map to improve vertex density on cliffs. Essentially, 
this is going to straighten out your UVs or your vertices rather, the points within your landscape, reducing your texture stretching. Because you do not want your rocks to be stretching, you want them to be the shape and size and proportions that it's meant to be. So be sure to go ahead and retopologize your landscape before you do go and texture it. Now if you do texture it and it does look a little bit funny or stretched, go ahead and run the retopologize tool over that. The next tool that we've got available to us is the visibility tool. This is essentially going to allow you to remove parts of your landscapes. So you can essentially just mask it out, which is going to remove it. Now, because this is a landscape that doesn't have a material, with this functionality built into it, I cannot currently show you this. But as we begin to learn to build our landscape materials, we are going to be showing you how you can use this visibility tool. So having said that, let's move straight on to the mirror tool. And the mirror tool is just something that is going to allow you to speed up the process of developing your landscape in symmetrical environments. So let's take our environment that we've got here at the moment. We've been doing this sculpting on one side. If I go ahead and press apply, it is going to apply all of that sculpting that we've done on one side over to the other side. Now there is going to be instances where you might want to recenter this or apply it again. You've got these options here. What you've also got is the ability to change the operation. So you can change it from plus x to minus x or you can just move it from minus x to plus x and this is just going to swap it over to the other side. So let's press control, control Z a couple of times just to go back. And what you can also do is play around with the operation. The operation is essentially just going to change the type of mirroring. So you can change it from the X to the X, or you can change it from the Y to the Y. You can even do things like rotating. So just take your landscape here, and what you can do is you can play around with this to get different types of mirroring. And you are going to see your arrow and your little grid line here is going to move as we go ahead and change the operation. And if I press apply, it is going to make that extra operation. So have a little play around with this and you'll get super comfortable with it. And like I said, in symmetrical environments, you're going to be saving yourself a hell of a lot of time by simply using this mirroring tool. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you with this mirroring tool, what you can also do is change the mirroring point as well on the X and Y axes, so you can move this along as you see fit, just like that. That's it for this video. I hope this gives you a better understanding of some of the different tools you've got available to you for sculpting your landscapes inside of Unreal. Be sure to check out the next video where we check out how we can paint our landscapes that we've just made. Be sure to check out our Patreon for more awesome videos just like this, but as always, stay awesome, keep creating, Virtus signing out.